It is seven past seven. I think for most, the Level 3 extension came as somewhat of a shock yesterday, and as for the rest of the country being stuck with two because of Auckland, can't have made it a good Monday. The Prime Minister is with us. A very good morning to you. Good morning. Is it fair to suggest we shouldn't actually be here and this is all on you? Uh, no, I think it's all on COVID, Mike. And when I continue to look around the world, you know, and we should, because obviously every other country uh, is having similar experiences, either battling COVID, trying to keep it out or dealing with resurgence. So we are not alone in that. Um, and so, no, I'm, I'm not sure it is fair to make that statement. The border leaked and you're in charge of the border. Well, we are still working extraordinarily hard to determine what it is that occurred with this particular cluster. Um, comprehensive testing across all border um, staff, those at front line. And, of course, we've reached into wider testing, even at the peripheries of our ports, still yet to determine what exactly happened here. We will keep hunting, though, because I do want to learn what happened in this situation. However, having said that, we'd always prepared for it as well because there are very few countries, in fact, I can't name one, that's had an outbreak like ours, managed to get down to free of community transmission and then hasn't seen some form of resurgence. So you don't think the border leaked? Well, I, I haven't been able to determine where yet, Mike, um, and I've wanted to know that because, of course, that's how we can make those constant improvements. And we have all the way through this period constantly sought to improve and change our response based on the evidence because... The world has been learning about You improved about your COVID performance because you got caught with your pants down because you weren't testing the way you said you were. Uh, sorry, which? Uh, what are you referring to specifically? You weren't there? testing or? at the border. The border workers weren't being tested despite the fact you said they were. Uh, not as comprehensively as we wanted to know. So I've already run through this with you a couple of times. As you know, we did have a regime in place that wasn't allowing us to data match to make sure everyone was being tested. So we started doing it at the place of work. Um, we then weren't getting the numbers high enough to give us confidence that we were capturing everyone on right. a regular basis. So all of this is on you. And in the... Uh, Mike, that makes an assumption that that is where it came from, and I am not going to make any assumptions about uh, what happened. Well, where, where, where else did it come from? It. Well, of course, we've continued to run a few theories that we're trying to run down, and you're probably better to ask a scientist for their reckons rather than mine, but we have tested um, almost all our border workers and have not found it. We have tested our quarantine workers and have not found it. We've even done the genome sequencing of people who have been positive in our facilities and as yet have not been able to match it to what we have seen in this cluster. We've tested at our ports and have not been able to find it. There are a number of theories that extend outside of that, whether or not people have reinfection after the fact, after they've been tested. We've had theories around whether or not it's in cool store. We have not been able to prove anything yet, Mike. I will take responsibility for our government's response, but I also want to make sure that I know exactly what it is that didn't work here. Do you not think about things before you announce them? I'm thinking about the borders and the exemptions that you made people apply for to get in and out of the borders to come to work, and then they did apply for them, and they never heard back, and therefore they couldn't go to work. Wasn't that always obvious, and why didn't you think of that when you put that in place? Of course we think about all of these issues. Well, why did it go so wrong then? Because, Mike, Mike, sometimes we won't necessarily, uh, won't necessarily have the level of detail around who it is precisely that work, that live within the Auckland super city boundary, but may work outside of that boundary. That's just a level of detail that no government agency would have. So what we have done is created, uh, class exemptions, basically those lists of exemptions. So those individuals do not need to seek, um, permission to travel over the border. They just need to carry some evidence mm. that they fit within those exemptions. So the list is, is pretty comprehensive. It's constantly being updated. When I spoke to the health team yesterday, they still had a reasonable number of people applying that didn't need to. So that has been one of the issues. Are you still claiming you're getting positive tests back in two days? Uh, the last time I checked in with health, uh, and that was actually when we had higher testing numbers, we are getting them through the labs within that time. So we okay. don't have a backlog in our labs. So when people the say they've waited four, know, five, six, seven days, they're actually right? Uh, not necessarily for the lab results. It may well be that results are coming back to their GP. It depends where they got tested, Mike, but if they are relying on their GP to send on results, I can't account for whether or not that's okay. causing delays. Was there any pushback yesterday in Cabinet to the decision at all or not? 
No, no, there was there was a little bit of discussion around what we might learn over the coming week, but no, no, there was um, there was a consensus view on what we needed to do. Certainly, based on the fact that if you remember last time, like we actually really got down into a very small number of cases before we saw ourselves moving to level two. But what we've all agreed is uh, our our constant approach here needs to be managing and stamping out cases uh, with the fewest restrictions we can. So our view is, once this cluster is under control, it is one we should be able to manage in a level two environment, and that does need to be our ongoing goal. Any thought to moving this to a more apolitical setting? People like Gorman and Stephen Joyce and Peter Gluckman and Bob Jones all think that this has got way too political, there are way too many buzzwords, and we need some more economists and some more health professionals to make bolder decisions than the ones you're making. We make decisions based on health professionals' advice. In fact, that you've, we've always, always had the Director General available to yeah, give his viewers on the day of the decision. And he, of course, um, utilises his the health chief science advisor in town. Um, he, of course, is in touch with epidemiologists. Uh, the health advice we get is comprehensive advice, and people can see whether or not we're listening to that on the day that we make those so you So the answer to moving it to a more apolitical setting would be no then. So, so the suggestion that somehow um, no, that government should have no say, um, and therefore, I didn't say no say. I just said a more apolitical setting. I can't quite see a how that would work, and b uh, what Des Gorman is suggesting here. We have used experts and evidence all the way through. In fact. I think you'd be hard-pressed to find an example where we made a decision that wasn't informed by evidence and science. We, of course, then have the job of making sure that we're constantly weighing up the economic impact. It just so happens our view is a strong uh, science, evidence-based health yeah. view is the best way to support our economy. Should well. you be consulting the National Party and Shane Ritty more than you are? Um, our Minister of Health actually is staying in, in fairly regular contact, as I understand. Well, they claim they're not. Dr Ritty. Um, I'd be interested in that because the last time I spoke to the Minister of Health, certainly he found that he was having really good, solid, frequent engagement. Okay, with I'll Dr. check Ritchie. with Judith Collins shortly. Are you looking at buying a chunk of Auckland Port? Uh, uh, but apropos of what there, Mike? Because they're out of money and they've written to you four-page letter asking for it. Well, I get asked lots of, I have lots of requests, and that does not mean that this government is actively considering it. So you're not at the moment. No. The Borrowdale case, are you no. embarrassed by that? No, no, not at all, in fact. The I fact that lockdown was unlawful doesn't embarrass you? No, I don't think that that's a fair summary. That I'd say our Attorney General would probably correct you on that. Well, of course, of course he would. He should be embarrassed case. as well, because he lost. It was an unlawful uh, lockdown. The first nine days were unlawful. It's a statement of fact. Uh, that is... That is a com that is a completely uh, incorrect summation of that case, um, Mike. What it found was that actually we had good grounds in terms of protecting people's health for making the decisions. Yeah, they that said we that, did. but they also said it was what? unlawful. Yeah, they did say that. So what they said. So what was wrong about me was, saying it was, was unlawful? First, because they've also found that we had good grounds to have done what we did. So they've, I found it quite a balanced judgment in the end, Mike. Mike? Would you worry about losing to the Greymouth gas case? Uh, I can't comment on that. Why not? Um, because uh, I just simply haven't been briefed on the Greymouth gas case in order to make any assumptions. You're so being sued. Sure I'm not, I wouldn't want to say anything prematurely in a case we're engaged with either, Mike. All right. Do you look to take over in some way, shape or form either the Tauranga City Council or the Invercargill City Council? Why on earth are you making such suggestions? Because the department has written to both of the councils looking for information that they may involve the role of the minister in them. Uh, and you're suddenly making an assumption that we're going to take over... Well, that's one of the outworkings the of the information they receive from the letter they sent to them. Councils. Mike, if you've got a list of things that you want to run through this morning, then that is fine. If Were you like not aware of the department detail. writing to the councils asking for information of potential no, ministerial it's involvement? it's a ridiculous suggestion that we would take over a council or a port uh, or somehow this morning that you would like me to get into the detail of a gas case. The, these are, well, the gas cases you're being sued. The port is you've been written to. Happens from and the time. councils, Mike, two government departments have written to the councils asking for information there potentially gets ministerial involvement. The idea that we are taking over a council, though, is incorrect. Neither council? No, Mike. Are you sure? 
Mike. <laughs> Mike, when has this government ever taken over a council? You're not going to appoint anybody to run the council is what I'm asking. No. Then why are you writing letters asking for information from the minister's department then? Um, look, Mike, I can't speak to that in detail, but no, we are not taking over a democratically elected council. Appreciate your time. Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister.